And now for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of And Now for Something Completely Machinima. I'm your host, Damien Valentine, and I'm joined by Phil Rice Hello. and Tracy Harwood. Hello. All right, um, we're talking about films again uh, this week, and we're actually going to choose to talk about mine. Which is a Star Citizen film. Um, it's kind of a Star Citizen film mixed with poetry, which is something I thought Ricky would enjoy watching. But unfortunately, he's at a horror convention, so he's not here to talk about it with us. Um, but uh, I hope he enjoyed watching it anyway, because uh, I know he does watch the films we pick, even when he he's not here to talk about them with us. Um, so uh, yeah, I do hope Ricky, you're enjoying yourself and you enjoyed this film. But uh, anyway. Back to it. Um, it's called We Were Wanderers from the Beginning. And it's kind of a video showcasing some of the beautiful scenes of Star Citizen and this um, narrator talking about the need for human exploration. And, you know, I think, you know, a landscape like this, different, different environments and a stunning looking game, those two kind of things really go well together. And so I thought this is going to be my pick for the month. I actually chose it about 10 minutes after we recorded last month's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been sitting on this one for a while. So I hope you two um, enjoyed it. But if you know if you don't, that's fine too. Um, so what do you think? Shall I go, Phil? <laughs> sure. This I loved. I absolutely loved it. It's, um, as you said, arts and crafts, star citizen, in-game creation of... Um, well, it's a it's a take on Eric Vernquist's um, film, The Wanderers, and it's been released by a guy called Mister Hasgaha. Hasgaha. Anyway, it's been released by him. He's one of the creators um, for for the actual Machinima as well. <laughs> now, the 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 aim of these creators, the Machinima creators was to depict each scene as true to the original film by Vernquist as closely as possible within the limits of the game while showcasing the scope and the beauty and the diversity of just a few of the locations in the Star Citizen universe. And I actually watched the original film as well, and it is indeed almost a scene-by-scene -scene recreation of the original. But what's interesting is that Actually, in this, there's a lot more depth to the animation and the soundscape than the original film. Um, you've got, for example, spacecraft sounds, which you haven't got in the original. You've got kind of contemporary ships. Obviously, they're a little bit sort of older in, in, in the original. Um, you've got things like bleeping noises. You've got a kind of a much more compelling music background. And of course, um, I think what's really good about it is the, is the, editing to the rhythm of the music which is which is just masterful i think in this recreation um it's really interesting as well because the animated characters are even more animated than they were in the original and in actual fact that's a, a fascinating observation because in the original they weren't animated they were real actors and somehow <laughs> it's kind of I think once again, really, another beautiful homage to Star Citizen. We've seen quite a few of these now, and they are it just they just showcase what this beautiful game is really about. It's just gorgeous. <clears throat> now, Vernquist's original Wanderers um was was actually based on scientific ideas and concepts of what our future in space might look like. Um and he used digital recreations of actual places in the solar system um, built from kind of real photographs and map data. And the aim was to show a 
a glimpse of the fantastic and beautiful nature that surrounds us on our neighbouring worlds, and above all, how it might appear to us if we were actually there. It borrowed from science fiction authors such as um, 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 uh, Arthur C. Clarke and uh, Kim Stanley Robinson, um, and it was actually inspired also by the painter Chesley Bonestell, um, who was very well known architect and painter. He actually worked as an architect on the Golden Gate Bridge and also the Chrysler Building and films like Citizen Kane. And it was actually his paintings of planets and star system, sy systems that um, inspired America's um, space program. Um, and the original film also borrow, borrowed Carl Sagan's voice to narrate it using excerpts from his reading of the pale blue dot, a vision of the human future in space. Now, the creators of the machinima state that they hope their version conveys the sense of what was originally intended in the in the other film, the kind of, you know, hope, adventure, the wonderment, uh, and also from Carl Sagan's readings. Well, I think it does that really well. Um, but of course, what's great about this film is that it's a it's a cinematic um, using an open world game. And the game is there for all to experience. Whereas in Vernquist's film, that could never happen. It's a film. Um, so I think what you've got here is something really quite important. It's a film that's taking some original ideas and presenting a further possibility of being that space traveler, albeit virtually. I think... Actually, Vernquist should sit and, sit up and really take note of of uh, the point that's being made here. He's still a creator. He's still focused on doing these amazing space scenes. There, there are many um, examples of uh, films and clips that he's contributed that are space scenes on his um, website, which you can kind of take a look at. But but this machinima, I think, is beyond the cinematic experience that he would have created. It's probably much closer, I think, to what Bonestell envisioned in his paintings, this kind of imaginary um, imaginary becoming real, so to speak. It's much closer to that than it is to Vern, Vernquist's um, filmic version of it. Um, Hasgaha, if I can, get, if I can get, get his name right. He also said that the video was a four-year passion project created Ooh. in their free time. Four years. Well, I mean, I think that attention to detail and taking the lead from a, a great editor, which obviously Vern Chris clearly, clearly is, in, in making the kind of shot selections, um, it, that, that detail certainly comes through this. Um, and I, I think also that another thing that's kind of worth commenting on is actually the voice acting in this. Um, which was done by a guy called calls himself Space Tomato. Now, obviously, in the original, you've got Carl Sagan's voice. Well, it's just so iconic that, of course, it was never going to be something that you could really emulate in this film, unless, of course, what you did was use something like um, a generative AI to, to, to sample it and recreate it. But I actually think these creators have done something far more important here, which is to demonstrate their, their homage to the game by having respect for that original voice, not from the narrations, which is what Vernquist has used from the, from the book, but by using the book itself um, and, and, you know, having respect for the content of the book. Um, so for me, this shows an awful lot of creative craft. I mean, four years, it's a, it's a brilliant job. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see this. I think they've done an incredible uh, job with with um, with creating this in in the way that ha they have, and I think, as I said, overall, I think Vernquist would be should be very interested in what's been achieved with it. So, thank you, Damien. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'd, I'll put some links up for the other other things that I've been sort of telling you about as I've been going through through it as well, so that you can kind of check those out. But um, yeah, brilliant job. Well done. Yeah, I think almost without exception, um, the shots in the new film were 
cinematically and more just generally more beautiful uh, than the original. Uh, just yeah. extremely well done. I think the shot that sticks with me the most is one of the final shots where it's the close, the first real close up we get of the female astronaut. Yeah. And you're only seeing the upper half of her face, but you can see her expression change. It's just beautifully done. The to show someone smile without seeing their mouth. That's just a beautiful thing. Like it that's is. that's that's a that's a level of of detail and and stuff that uh, which emulates the shot of the original. I believe. I don't. I don't it think does. in the original we could see her mouth either. But the character that they chose for this, just these beautiful green eyes and just, I mean, it's a, it's just a perfect, a perfect face, right? So, and then, yeah, so many of the uh, the shots as well. I, I did too. I watched the original and, and this. And uh, there might be, I, I, it seems like there was one shot that I thought, eh, I like the original better. But for the most part, first of all, faithfully done. And then in almost every case improved upon yeah. the originals. Uh, the fidelity of those shots, some of the wide shots in particular where the, the the desert landscape and there's the ship approaching and the few astronauts and it's just, it was just stunning, stunning. Like, and I've seen quite a bit of stuff out of Star Citizen and have been wowed by it many a time, but some of these shots were just more beautiful than I've I've ever seen from it. I mean, it, it really the game continues to impress. Um, as far as the the voice, uh, I love the timbre, the tone of the new narrator. He's got a great voice. But yeah, man, how do you top Carl Sagan? I mean, just in terms of delivery, uh. Sagan had such a unique way of speaking and it was just in, entrancing the, the the way he would pause in specific ways in his sentences. You're right. It can't be, uh, you can't out Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan, you know, <laughs> it was just, it's just magical, but this was a very well done job and the, the quality of the vocal, I mean, a really good microphone was involved here. And it was well done. And I think probably the actor would have been capable of trying to match the exact tempo of Sagan's delivery. And it would have come off, it would have risked coming off almost mockingly, even though I don't think that would have been the intention, right? But if he was trying, if, if someone tried to do an impression it, it would have been to the detriment of the film. And I think maybe someone involved here knew that and made that decision that, okay, we're not going to try and imitate Carl Sagan in this, but we're going to stick, we're going to be faithful to the text. And uh, the book is wonderful, by the way. It holds up really well today too. Like it's not a new book by any means. Uh, it holds up really well. And it reads very well too. Like it reads in Sagan's voice, if you know what I mean. Like <laughs> you amazing. can hear it. It's totally appropriate that he did his own audiobook on it because he wrote it and it's in his voice. So it's a wonderful book. It's it's worth looking for at your library if you if you've never read it. Um and so yeah, I think it was an it was a really great choice for an homage. And I think it was a very successful homage. And it's I mean, it's it's not often that uh, that an homage eclipses the production quality of the original like this. That's just not usually what happens. Usually, an homage is respectfully lesser. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And in almost every regard, this one's not. This is an amplification of the strengths of the original and an improvement upon it based on the tech available now. You know. Uh, it's just wonderful. So yeah, I hope the original filmmaker, uh, Eric, I hope he does take notice to this uh, because it should be very flattering uh, because it's not, it does show great respect to his original film. I mean, we can talk about shot selection if we want to, but those, 
those shot choices were inherited from the original and they were brilliant. Uh, it was a brilliant edit originally. And yeah, this, this, this emulated that in a very respectful way. And it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous piece of film. So yeah, excellent pick. Thanks for picking it. It was a pleasure to watch. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. And Tracy mentioned something about that I wanted to add that, yeah, because this, all these shots were in the game. If you have the game, you can go and check out these places and see them for yourself. But in the original, it's a bit harder to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know there there are some stunning shots in in this video from the game. And you know there's nothing if you've got the game, there's nothing to stop you going and having a look yourself and explore these actual places. And uh, yeah, just have a look at them around and see what's there. Can and I ask you something about Star Citizen, Damien? Because I yeah. I've been, every time I see a film of this caliber that comes out of that game, I'm tempted. Right. Maybe not so much for playing the game because that it seems like, it, you know, any universe game is going to be a pretty big time investment, right? right? But for the same reason that I picked up No Man's Sky as a scene generator for Machinima purposes in the future, right? So I, I look at this one for it. It's a little bit more investment involved than... Uh, no Man's Sky on the special that I picked it up on very cheaply, yeah. but it helped me understand a little bit and help the listeners to understand a little bit of Star Citizen. How how does the how how much should one expect to actually spend? Because I'm a little I'm a little bit confused by this. You know, they've done a stylized sign up process, right, with the Robertson Space Corporation, and it, it's yeah. you're buying a package with the ship and things like that. But it's like if if somebody really wants to experience the game, is this is it going to be a money sink or is it straightforward? You make a purchase and then you you can play the game and experience it in full. What's what's your take on that? All right. So I backed this game when it first launched its crowdfunding campaign many years ago. Yeah, I wish I had. Uh, um. Well, I mean, you've you've been in for a very long wait to have anything to play. Yeah, but. Uh, um, so the way it works is now most games you just buy the game in whatever the price is and then you can start playing it. This one has many different packages and what you get is basically the ship you start with. So if you want if you're happy to pay the lower the basic amount, you get a basic ship. And there's nothing wrong with the basic ship. You've, you're perfectly able to fly it. You can make enough in-game money to buy a better ship. Um, but if you want a bit of an advantage, you can put a little bit more money in and then buy a start off the game with a better ship. And the different ships got different capabilities as well. Some are good for carrying cargo. Some are better for piracy and combat. And um, it really depends on what you want to do. And so if you're going to do something like that, if you just want to explore... Don't go for one of the fighters' ships because they don't have a lot of fuel, so you're not going to be able to get very far. And so get one of the basic packages, and you can earn some in-game money. So all the ships you can buy with real money, you can buy in-game. Um, it's not a play-to-win kind of thing where you you can buy something really advanced and then um, just beat everyone uh, because. The thing about the more expensive ships, you can't fly them with one person, so you need a crew, and the crew has to be real people. Oh. Uh, which sounds like I've not actually been able to do that. I've only played it by myself. But the idea of having a bigger ship and then having different crew members take on different roles on the ship is very appealing. But I've got to find other people willing to play it with me to do that. Right. Um, uh, so I'm having a look at the price page now, and... At the moment, the the foundation is called the Aurora MR Foundation, which is the the very basic ship, is thirty eight pounds. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much that is in dollars. At the time of recording, they've got a ten percent off discount. Um, I do know that in October it's the anniversary for the game. So and like usually they do special. Then. Okay. Yeah. And every so often they do like a free week where you can just download the game and play it for free and you can uh 
you know, play around with any of the ships, even if you couldn't that possibly afford them. That would be worth me doing, doing. Yeah, yeah, to test the waters. So essentially, if you if you go in at the lowest tier, the the the, the least expensive package, you can eventually get to where you can get more advanced stuff, but you have to put in time in the game, yeah, to do so. Or you can kind of have a head start by doing the more expensive package, and, yeah. and and not have to wait essentially because it's either time or money. Is that am I understanding it generally right? Yeah, um, and there's several different starter packages, different types of starter ships, and then you hear, uh, looking at the most expensive one is an exploration ship. So um, I I haven't been following the game that closely for a while, so I don't recognize it that much but it, it looks the picture the thumbnail picture i see now it's quite a big ship so you're going to need to prove for this true okay um that's over a thousand pounds so oh that's God. a yeah uh yeah um, but Wait. you can buy the ship in game with enough if you get enough in-game money i don't know how much it costs in game um wow I imagine it'd take a while to to do that um okay yeah well that gives I, me an idea yeah okay um so I did, and if you get one of these starter ships, you're not if and if you decide, well, actually, the, I'm going to put a little bit more money in. You can buy ships to add onto your account. Oh, okay, okay, um, as well. Well, that's uh, that's the that's the money sink concern, right? Is is yeah, um, but if but you, you don't have do, to do that, it's an option. No, yeah, okay. but if you do do that, you're not getting anything special with a ship that you only get by paying for it. So you're not getting any special laser that can Vapor, instantly vaporize anyone without having to do anything. Um, right. It's going to be exactly the same as if you buy it with in-game money. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, if there's a two-person crewed ship, maybe uh, if I get, if I, if I feel compelled to get in there, maybe we'll talk. All right. Because that that does That's sound fun. I haven't. Haven't gotten to do any any co op play in in many a year, and that would be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Well, I have to give the game a try because every time I, last time I tried it, it wasn't optimized well, so my computer really struggled with it. So, uh, the, hopefully... okay, I remember you talking about that, right? Yeah, I need to give it. Maybe I'll do it again in October when usually in October they do a big update um, for the anniversary. So I'll give it a try then and try out the latest, see how it goes. Cool. Yeah. Well, it uh, looks like we've just finished this uh, discussion about my film. So I'm glad you both enjoyed it. I hope uh, uh, I hope Ricky enjoyed it. And I hope our uh, listeners also enjoyed it as well. Uh, so, yeah, if you'd like to talk to us about this film or about Star Citizen, uh, please uh, send us an email at talk at completelymachinima.com. And we will look forward to your feedback. And we will see you next week. So uh, take care. And uh, bye from me and from Phil and Tracy. <laughs>